For today's sketch, we are traveling to the neighborhood of North Park to explore a community landmark. North Park's big green water tower is known by many names. Officially, it's the University Heights Water Storage and Pumping Station, as listed on the National Register of Historic Places. Locally, some have nicknamed it the Tin Man, but most everyone knows this local icon is the North Park Water Tower. Almost a century old, the North Park Water Tower stands over 127 feet tall and holds 1.2 million gallons of water. That's enough water to fill two Olympic-sized swimming pools or 40,000 bathtubs. Built in 1924, the, the water tower ceased operations in the 1990s. But in its heyday, here is how it worked. A water tower is a pretty simple machine. Clean treated water was pumped originally from Mission Valley up to a reservoir below the tower where it was stored until needed. Each night when demand was low, water could be pumped up into the tank. And then during the day, its hydrostatic pressure driven by gravity could force the water through the pipes and into the houses. Because water towers rely on gravity, they have to be much taller than the buildings they serve. By the way, you think the tower held a lot of water? The reservoir below it held 11 million gallons. If you've been by there in the recent past, you may have noticed that the historic North Park water tower has been undergoing some major upgrades to repair some structural deficiencies in case of an earthquake or windstorm. Yes, the city is spending $2 million to strengthen a structure that doesn't do anything anymore. But where would the neighborhood be without its cultural icon, the beloved North Park Water Tower? May she reign another hundred years. And while she's here, it's a great structure to sketch. Let's get started with our sketch by noticing a few things about this interesting water tower. For one, it looks like a can with a ball stuck underneath it on stilts. And that's how we can break it down and simplify it. Let me do a quick demonstration and show you how to make a cylinder look like it's got a round form. And also we'll do the same for a circle. Let's turn it into a ball. A cylinder is a rectangle if you look at it straight on, but we see things in three dimensions. And so a cylinder, can of soup for example, would start with an oval. And you could put a second oval at the bottom, connect them, and because um, the water tower or a can of soup most cylinders are not see-through. We would hide the lines that we don't see. Can you see how it looks like a can that we're looking down on? But, but wait, we're looking up at the water tower. We're not seeing the top of it, we're seeing the bottom of it. So let's do our demonstration looking up at the cylinder and it's floating in the air, just like our water tower. We would see the bottom of it. How does that differ from say a rectangle that has an arched top roof? It's the shadows that help us. Our light source is coming from the left, in this case, the west. So the left side would be the light and the right side will be in shadow. I'm adding some pencil to the right half of our shape to indicate that shadow side, but it's not gonna be uniform shadow. A cylinder is rounded. The shadow changes as it goes around the shape. So there's a gradual change as it goes from the light to the dark side. It's darkest farthest away from the light source like that. And then if we're working backwards, it starts to get a little lighter and a little lighter until it's in full sun. So there's one more thing to think about though. The sun is a strong light source, but there's always light bouncing around from other surfaces, sort of reflected off of other surfaces. And so to make your cylinder look really realistic, you want to allow that far right edge to be a little lighter. It's suggesting that reflected light off of something. I'm keeping a thin sliver a little lighter. So this allows the can or cylinder to look a little more convincing. And the can turns. 
and then the underside of the can would be in shadow since I'm saying that our light source is from up high. And it's flat, so we'll just make it uniform. There's some undersides to the can. You can see the back lip of a can, but you wouldn't be able to see the front lip. And that helps gives it, give it some of that flatness. What about a circle? What's the difference between this circle and how do we make it into a ball? Again, let's say our light source is from over here. So we're going to have about half of it in shadow. So let's make a shadow side. But it's still not really 3D. What happens is this will be the area of the lightest light, and somewhere back here will be the darkest darks. I usually start with sort of a, a curving, a curving form like that, and I start darkening it, in, darkening it in like that. But I try not to get too dark all at once, because whatever it is I'm looking at, I'm going to study it while I'm adding some of these extra tones in it. And again, light's going to be bouncing off of the off of whatever surface the ball is sitting on, or even if it's floating in the air, there's going to be light coming from other areas. And so I might lighten up that backside. Can you see it coming together? And then I might add some of these shadows up here, where it's just to show that there's tone to it, these medium tones. Now let's add the shadow itself on the ground. That The can we left floating in the air, but let's say the ball is sitting on the ground. You see how it's shadow? It's not going to be a circle, it's more of an oval. And in some cases, the shadow is the darkest in, in areas. Again, it's gonna have around its edges, it's gonna get lighter, but the cast shadow will oftentimes be the darkest. And then you can keep working it. In a sketch, you just, you want to do as quickly as possible. And that's why sometimes in a sketch, I'll just give it a little smiley face on the side and a few extra. People who really get into drawing these things and want to really render them can spend hours on just a simple orb. We're not going to spend hours. We're just going to give that circle some shape, just like that. Let's start by sketching the cylinder. And for that, we'll start making a simple square. And we start with a square because I think squares are maybe the easiest uh, shape to, to sketch. You kind of know if you have your square correct. So it looks like a square. They're a little easier than circles, just starting out cold. I've set my, my little square a little bit off to the left and up a little bit above halfway up the sheet. Now we're going to make just a curve line on the top of it, and a similar curve line at the bottom like that. You're, you're, if, if it weren't for this ball that's sticking out the underside of the, because what I'd like for you to do now is use this horizontal line and make it the center line of a circle. So go ahead and, and, and draw a complete circle. Try to ignore the little arch. Just draw a full circle like that. Kind of looks like a big mouth, doesn't it? There. So that full circle, and the reason I'm having you sketch out a full circle is so that you can see if you've got the size of it, the size of it right. If I said, oh, just make the half part of a circle, you could, uh, but doing a full circle helps you see if you've got it about right. Now that you've sketched in the full circle, Erase the top half of that circle, leaving your little arch, and go ahead and erase that horizontal line. So here's the outside of your tin can, if you will. 
And here's the underside of that ball that's in there. All right, that was a great start. A few other things we can do now is a second little line that is the roof of the water tower. And notice it's, it's about the same size, a little larger. So it's, it'll come up a little, mirror that, just follow along that same curve, and then see how it wraps around the corner there. Now let's see if we can't find our kind of our eye level in this. It looked to me like about the size of the bottom of that ball is about where my eye level is in this photo. Or it would have been Jim Brady's eye level because he took the photo for us. So let's take that dimension, make a tick mark, and that's about our eye level. That's not where the bottom of these supports are, though. That's below this point. All right, but, but let's just get that line going anyway, and now let's, let's start adding the supports. So facing us, there are six of them. One, two, three, four, five, six. And then there's a support right in the middle underneath that little guy. We could go ahead and put him in first if we wanted to. I don't think he's a support. I'm, I'm betting that's a pipe. And that's either water in or water out. But these supports, and, and we're we're gonna we're gonna try to ignore the supports that are on the back side because there's so many that'd be kind of confusing. So I'd like us just to add these six up front. And Jim was nice enough to make this, he was he found a spot where he was sort of symmetrical looking at the tower, so that these two, if we find the center line of our tower, these two are just a little bit past. We can just make, just start by making a little, a little line like that. Let's not commit just yet. Let's find the outer ones and see how they're at a slight angle or oh, very slight. So go ahead and, and make a couple of lines there and make a couple of lines here. If it's already really coming together and I'm just running them long for now. And then let's see if we can't find these guys that are just a little bit off center. And then the last two, look there, this distance looks like it's about that distance. You see what I'm saying is these look like they're evenly spaced and these other ones are evenly spaced, but there's all that foreshortening that's happening. So they look like they're a lot closer together. So. If you put these, these outer one, two, make them closer to the end. There, how's that? Find the bottoms of your, of your supports, make it because they're in a circle. So just make a little curve like that. And then this guy is floating up here. He's about in the middle. Well, actually, he comes down pretty low, doesn't he? All right, let's get this, this compression. Looks like a compression ring. Let's sketch in this ring. And it's a very flat little oval. And the middle of it is just below the bottom. See how that is? Comes out, it touches the sides. It's a much flatter oval than these other ones that we sketched. You know, I think we did a good job blocking everything out. Let's add some of these, these items in. When we're following a sketch, we tend to like to do our lines and shapes, and then we go back in with details and tonal values. I like to add the edge of the sidewalk. It's very close, very close to the bottom of these. 
and I'm, I'll make another little diagonal line there. That's the street that's coming. And you don't need to add these. I just think that they, they do a nice job of, of finding your place. How about this little guy? So we don't have to do much. We're going to do these two bushes, which um, look like, uh, unfortunately, they're dead bushes, but they're going to be easy enough for us to, to sketch because they're just little circles. Uh, but first, we're going to find the end of this building. So the edge of the building looks like it's about even with this vertical support, that one in the middle. So go ahead and make a straight line. It only goes about halfway between the ground and that ring. So go about halfway up and then we made the sloping roof, little v, It's about, it's, it's a rectangle with a little pointy roof on it. And it doesn't go out too very far. It's actually almost square if you'll see that. So if you give yourself a little square, you know what the height of this is. And then give a little triangle on top. And then that roof line slopes away. And then, so we don't have to do too much else over here. This is where I like to just say, mm, that's the left side of my sketch. <laughs> and then I don't have to get into too much more than that. But let's put in these two little unfortunate little dead bushes. All right. I'm going to ignore the crane. I think I'm going to ignore the power lines too. That doesn't mean you have to ignore them. You can sketch them in if you'd like. Let's also sketch in the dumpster, but let's ex ignore the porta potty. So the dumpster is it's over here in the corner. It's at the end of that tower. It goes a little bit past the outer leg. And then how tall is it? It looks like it's um, j just above the, the bottom where the, these, these land on the ground. There's something important to know, though. If our eye level is here, we can't see the top of it. So that line, we shouldn't be able to see anything on top of it. You see things above it, but you won't see the top of that guy. So let's... Finish him off. Clean a few things up. Now let's go in for the shade and shadow. That's where this whole thing really starts to take take shape and where it, it stops looking like just a rectangle. And they start to become a three-dimensional cylinder and an orb. I think that these little ribs, these seams where they put the different pieces of metal together, I find them both interesting and helpful. If you would, maybe right up, right in the middle, halfway up from your cylinder is, is to, to make a, a curved line that matches this one. And there's a there's seven of them, but but we're gonna just we're gonna find one right in the middle and how about if we just do Break this into three, break this one into three. So one, two, three, and then up above, one, two, three. At any time as you're sketching through here, if you see anything a little funny, you can adjust it. I'm seeing that somehow my tower up top looks a little, looks a little lopsided, I don't know why. But we're in pencil, easy to fix. Now the next thing, if you wanted to add these little verticals in here, notice that the little verticals, when they're farther away, as they're turning, they're gonna get closer together. 
in the middle. That's maybe how you adjust the size. Is every other one, put one right in the middle. And then go over either side a little bit like that. And then this laid out like like brick uh, in that they stagger them, the pieces. Now we'll go to the side and there'll be another one close to the edge. That's the easiest way of, of doing these. It's just start in a row. start in a row and, and add them. And then they'll just, by their nature, get closer as they start to come around the corner. And again, you can always adjust them if you feel like once you get them down the first time, you think that you can make them look a little, a little more realistic. So what I've done is I've made those ones in the middle just a little bit wider so that it really looks like that's the closest. We're going to start adding the shadow and we're going to start adding the shadow on the can itself, on the cylinder. And so t notice how the shadow, it's in the afternoon, um, how the shadow is striking this side of the shape. And the little roof overhang is casting this great little shadow over here, which helps really define this, the shape of this, of this object. And so that's adding to it, but also all the sh the shadows on this side are helping that shape to turn. Look at how it starts about here. It goes up a little, starts to turn. Find that center line again. So, so the shadows are on that side of the can. <laughs> I know it's not a can. But it, it'll help you, and then these lines that we've sketched out it help you locate where that shadow is. It goes up, it goes down, and then over here it starts to become a much softer shadow. Now that we've cast it like that, we can just add a few lines. I'm going to make my shadow lines vertical. There's two ways that you can do it, is, but you, you most likely want to follow the shape of what you're casting the shadow on. So you see I've, I've done a sort of a uniform, cast a uniform shadow using vertical lines. We're going to add a few more lines to show as it starts to turn. And that's how we get, we get some shape. You can see how it starts to turn as we start to add the, the shadow there. And then the other lines that you can do can be these curved ones. They might be a little harder to, to do but some curved lines that go with the shape can help in the shadows. There's a very dark shadow underneath this lid. I'm just shading it all in dark. It almost doesn't matter where the lines are because I want to make it sort of a uniform dark. Part of it, um, the uniform dark, helps to define the, the shape of the water tower itself. There, and then, and then, because we're working in pencil, we're going to stay in pencil, you can go back and continue to add a little more to the areas uh, to get that shape uh, realistic looking. So I, we've got shadow here on this side of the can, but there's light reflecting from the sky and around. So this area here, the edge of this, is not the darkest of the shadows. The darkest of the shadows is going to be in a bit like that in this area. And then also they'll be darker up near the top because that little lip is, is casting that shadow. Now, and then you can keep working on it 
as I said, it definitely they start to soften here. But this is, is clearly a, a hard line on that shadow. How about the ball? Let's ignore the lines that we made for the, the vertical supports. So we've got, we've got a pretty dark line here. There's a lip around here as well. And uh, we hadn't done it before. It's not unlike the little roof up top. So if you'll just add a couple of lines, it's almost like the, the rings of Saturn. You can add a, another line. Cause see, there's a railing, and we saw in some of those, uh, one of those historic photos that people are actually standing up there. That's a safety railing. So there's the railing. Now, about this ball. So I'd like you to shadow it. It's, it's hard to. I'd like you to shadow it with lines that do a couple of things. It's good to mimic the shape. And so, because you can see, I don't know if you can see, but it's got some either staining or the paint has faded in certain areas, but it's almost like a watermelon where the lines go back to that center point. So some of your lines for your shading you want to go follow the shape of the circle of the ball, go back like that. And then because remember, this is the light source, we want extra shading on this part of the ball. And what we're going to do is, is shade this and then we'll erase some things to put those legs back in. And then work it until you're satisfied with it and it looks three-dimensional. Then let's take our eraser and a pencil and hopefully you haven't chewed off the end of your eraser off of your pencil. I know my kids like to do that. And with the edge of it, just take off where those vertical supports, where we covered up from the vertical supports like that. And then we'll go ahead and add some lines back in. There, see how that works? Now let's come back in with the pencil. We'll need to study the photo. Those supports, let's look at those supports carefully. They're like two columns. Each one is like two columns sort of hooked together. So you could make maybe three lines or so that it didn't just look like a single, single thing. You can see a little more detail in these supports. And there's there's sort of a little something going down the face of them. And you can ignore, not ignore. It just depends on the level of detail and, and the amount of time you have to spend. But th these are not so important. And if we spend too much time sketching them, then they take on too much importance. Okay, the next thing after you, you get those sort of put back in, is the, the supports on the right-hand side are going to be, see how they're all in shadow? And these has a face on them that's in the sun. So I think the best way to handle these is just these side supports on the right are all in shadow. And then as it turns around, just the right-hand side of them are in shadow. Also, you can, same with the little circle, that or so that oval, that ring, is everything over here is darker. And 
and you can see it behind. That big piece in the middle, we see that. And this ring behind is behind it. There, it's really taken shape, don't you think? Also, something, I don't know if it's staining or if it's shadow, but, but you can emphasize some lines that, and, and treat them like shadows. Remember I said it's sort of like the stripes on a watermelon. It helps to give that, that orb down there some shape. Some, some makes it more convincing. Okay, and then I haven't done the underside shadow here, but it's in there, the underside of that little walkway. As the sketch starts to come together, you can find, if you squint, you'll find where are the darkest areas. And then go ahead and darken those darker areas in. Where are your darkest darks? Interesting, when you squint, you can see where they are. Some of them are in the columns, but so so this is where this is where you can add your own effects. And how about I think I don't know if these are lightning rods or just what they're for, but they're little spires on top of the tower. Spin little lines like that, and then keep working it. What what else you'd like to add? Uh, let's get some shadow on the sides of this building. You can go vertical, diagonal. It's it's a flat surface, so however you'd like to do your cross hatching and shadowing. And then um, we've learned to shadow the the trees to make them look like they're round. And and this is an area where you might have to take some. Oops, get your eraser and take some of them off so that the trees get their shape. There's a little shadow here from the overhang. Give you some lines to show that's where the roof goes off to. Anything else you'd like to add? This is where it's you get to decide. Now there, we can't see it very well. Um, I'm, I'm trying to sort of ignore everything underneath here, but there'd be a shadow underneath, underneath this. This shadow is going to be cast way over here, but I'm deciding that that's about how much of my, my sketch I want to make. I want it to be about the tower. What do I want to? do in here? Well, maybe I just want to pretend that it was all trees, little trees in the background. There's the shadow on this side of the trash dumpster. Sometimes what you can do is just the face of the curb has got some little, because it's in the foreground, it's closer to us. Maybe there's a little bit of detail about the curb. I feel like there's more to this shadow that could be added. It's sort of interesting that it's almost like the edge of the shadow has some of the darkest darks. And then underneath 
underneath here, I think we could add, a, I could add, at least to mine, I could add a little more color. I mean, a little more tone. I almost forgot the X's. See how these, this is diagonal bracing. It's to keep everything together when things want to shift around, especially like during an earthquake. It keeps it rigid. Keeps it rigid without adding any additional, additional weight. Keeps everything be open and airy. And so it's just your X's. And they go down to the bottom of, of the columns. I think the angle at which I sit when I'm sketching makes these, <laughs> this is a little squatter or a little wider. Actually, I could cheat a little bit and add a few lines around to the edges to see if I can't get them to to be a little wider. How would we like to do the sky? We have a couple of options. You could do a poly sky. You know, that's where we made those fun lines just sort of swooping through and then take a couple of them and add some verticals through there. It's just fun and lively. Um, maybe you want a couple lines behind, as if we had some some shrubbery, some bushes off on the horizon, and that um, allows the tower to sort of stand out in front. Don't forget to add some little birds. I want to try a different way. I want to try a sky that uses a few more horizontals. First, I will add some lines back here that are just some uh, curved top lines. This may, may be clouds on the horizon. I'll come back in and, and give them some tonal value. Um, those are just going to be like as if they were trees off in the distance. And what I'm trying to do is, is to give a little background to our tower. Polly oftentimes does this with some, some great, like he might bring in some color, a colored marker. Uh, that's some background near the ground. But for the sky, I want to try some, some horizontal lines. I might make a couple of horizontal lines, and then I might make some, I'm trying to to, to show is there might be some clouds and you know how clouds are sometimes they're they're curvy on the top and sometimes they're curvy on the bottom and sometimes there's a little of both and and then what I want to do is to um, just take a couple of these bands and add just some extra lines because clouds are not always the same. And maybe I'll go ahead and add more lines to that. And then maybe there's a couple of lines on the clouds themselves. We're in pencil, so I can't really mess up my drawing, my sketch too much, can we? Maybe there's some big 
a few clouds at the top. So it looks more like a sky, like a, if we were in the prairie or in the Midwest or, or in South East County, where there aren't too many buildings to get in the way of the clouds. There. We can still have some birds. And we call it the North Park Water Tower. Oh, I believe it's got other names. The Tin Man. San Diego, in and out of room. September. Whatever date is that you've done your sketch.